Welcome to the basics of Grasshopper. This tutorial is an introduction to making the most simple geometry in Rhino and in Grasshopper. We're going to create points, lines, polylines, curves, and surfaces in both Rhino and Grasshopper. So without further ado, let's get started. In Rhino, we have by default four viewports to help us better see things in 3D space. We have top, front, right, and perspective. Let's go ahead and draw the simplest of geometry, a point, in 3D space. We're going to define a point by an X, Y, and Z coordinate. To find the point command, you can look in the main sidebar and there's single point right here. If we click on that, note that the point command runs in the command line right here. We can see the command point, and it's asking us for the location of the point object. We can draw that in any of the viewports. I suggest maybe trying the top viewport first of all, and you can place it. To place it in an exact coordinate, you want to have grid snap turned on. You can turn on grid snap down here at the bottom with grid snap. If you, if you turn on object snaps as well, you may want to select the options you need. So I'm going to place a point, for example, here at the origin, 0, 0, 0. If I click on my point and I've turned on the gumball, you can activate that right here, and I can move it around, snapping onto the grid nicely. So we can create a point and we can easily reposition it. Another way to create a point is with the command line. If I click on point, you can see the point command runs. I can then type in the location. For example, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0x, 0y, 0z, and that will put enter and place it right here at the origin. So I can also just type in the command point and then put a position in 2, 2, 0 for 2x, two 2y, two and 0 on the z-axis, so you can see. Now, there's another way to construct a point, and that's using Grasshopper. Rhino's visual programming interface. The easiest way to open Grasshopper is to type it in on the command line. Just enter Grasshopper and Grasshopper is going to open. So let's create a new document, file, new document in Grasshopper. And we're going to start um, by constructing a point. So the Grasshopper interface has a menu bar at the top has, for example, create a new file. We have tabs for components um, and parameters. Parameters store data, and components are functions for operations. And we'll use these to define data and construct our geometry. So let's start by, then we have a canvas here below, which is where we construct a visual diagram of our program. We're going to go to the vector tab. That's the um, fourth tab over, vector, and you'll see a point panel. Here under point, we're going to pick construct point. And we'll make a point just like we did in Rhino by specifying x, y, and z coordinates. So. I place the construct point here on my canvas, and this is a component an operation that runs an operation. The operation in this case is constructing a point, and by default this point is at 0, 0, 0. I have inputs on the left, output on the right. So if I mouse over point here, I can see it says one locally defined value, 0, 0, 0 point coordinate can see it previewed in red in Rhino. 
the x component, x coordinate is zero by default, y is zero, z is zero. Let's change these input values. To do that, I'm gonna place a number slider and connect it to the x coordinate. So we can go to the parameters tab, params, and I'm gonna look in the input panel and I'm gonna pick a number slider. I pick the number slider and I place it on the canvas. And I'm gonna connect it to my X coordinate here. So I, on the number slider, you see I have a number. So I can move this toggle to change the value this is going from zero to one. At the end, I have a node. I can connect that, click on that and drag to make a wire and that will connect to the X input in this case. So, in, so the output of the number slider is connecting to the input for the X coordinate parameter for this component. Now we can see our point has moved one unit on the X axis. If I want to edit this number slider, I can by double clicking on the left hand side where it says number slider. This will pull up a dialog. I can change the name, for example, to X. I can change the uh, type of number from floating point, which has decimals, to integer with no decimals. I can change the maximum or the range here to 10. So I'm going to go from 0 to 10. My initial value will be 1. OK, my number slider's changed. Now, my point as I move this is going to move along the x-axis. I'm going to copy this, control C, control V to paste it, right click on the left hand side, change the name to Y, connect that, drag at the end and connect it to the Y coordinate, copy and paste that, change the name to Z, connect that to the Z coordinate. So left click and drag to draw a wire from the output to the input parameter. Now I can got a point that's at one, one, one in space. And I can change with the slider to move this through space. So the difference between Rhino and Grasshopper is, in Rhino I'm drawing my geometry. I can go back and edit it, of course. Here in Grasshopper, I'm defining it from parameters. And I can continually change those parameters. Now, in Grasshopper, I can also reference geometry from Rhino or draw it in Rhino. So another way to construct a point is with a point parameter. So if I'm here in the params tab, I can pick point and place it. It's orange because it's empty. This, a point parameter, as opposed to a component, is a container for data, right? So it starts off empty and I need to fill it. So I can fill it by connecting it to this construct point. And then this will be stored here. When I write, when I click on a component or parameter, it'll be green. If it's not selected, it'll be red. So I can hide the constructed point I made already by right clicking on the middle and turning off preview. And you can see that the data is now being previewed on this parameter. I can also define the value for a new point parameter 
by setting it in Rhino. So I can right click on this and I can go set one point and Grasshopper is going to minimize and Rhino is going to ask me for a point location. So I can draw this, maybe snapping on the grid. I'll take the origin. And now the points to find here in Grasshopper. If I, my, this is no longer orange, it's gray. It means it's fine. And if I mouse over, I can see it has a value of zero, zero, zero. Another way I can see what the value is, other than mousing over, is to place a panel. So under params, in the input panel, here's a panel. This holds text values. I'm going to place it. It's my panel. So if I connect it, for example, to this point, drag the output of the point to the input of the panel, I'll see it has a value of 0, 0, 0. I could instead connect it to this construct point, and I get 5, 5, 5. 5, 5, 0, or 5, 5, 5. As I change the parameter, this will update. Now, I could also construct a point from a panel. So if I place a panel here, and I have a new point component, and I connect the panel to the point component, it's going to show up red. If I mouse over, it says it has a null value. There's nothing in the panel. But if I was to put a value here in the panel, say x comma y comma z, so 550, five, for example, it's going to populate that point from the text panel. So rather than typing, constructing the point from number sliders, I can construct it from a single um, set of coordinates as a panel here. If I want to reshape the panel I can. If I want to rename the panel, I can right click on the top and give it a label. Or if I want to get rid of the label, I can just delete it. So here are several different ways to construct a point. Now let's move on and construct a line from several points. So first of all, let's go ahead and draw a line in Rhino. So I'm going to minimize Grasshopper or close it, and we'll draw a line in Rhino. In the um, sidebar, um, drop down for the line, see single line, polyline. Let's start with a single line. If I click on it, the command line is going to ask me start of the line, then it will ask me for the end of the line. So I'm going to draw two points, one and then a second. Start of line, end of line. So I've drawn my two points and I have a line. If I click on the end point now, of course I can edit it and change the line. Let's go back to Grasshopper and let's construct that line. So right now I have two points. I have 0, 0, 0 and 5, 5, 0. So I can construct a line between these two points. I'm going to go to the Curve tab and pick a line. So under primitive, I'm going to pick line and place that. For the line, it wants a start point and an end point. Those are the parameters. So I'm going to put this point that's at the origin and it's my start point. And my end point will be this construct point. Now I have a line drawn between the two points. I can change the position by changing the parameters of the construct point component with the number slider. So 
So I have a parametrically defined line now. In Rhino, a polyline here in the sidebar polyline, where you can type in the command, is simply a line drawn through an ordered set of points. Enter to end. And the way we'll make that in Grasshopper is just the same. We'll make a series of points. So Grasshopper, if I want to make this as a polyline, instead of a line, I simply need to add, for example, another point. So let's copy and paste either of these and put that into a polyline component. So we can double click on the canvas and type in a, the name of a component like polyline to place it, or we can look here in the curve tab, in this case under spline, and find polyline. While you're getting to know your components, it's good to browse through these. Once you are familiar with them, it's quite easy to just double click and search for what you're looking for. So we've placed a polyline we need to put these input points into it. So I can drag the output of point in as the first vertex of my polyline and it's, its input. Now this is orange because it doesn't have enough data to run. If I drag the next point into the vertex, it's gonna disconnect the first one. This connect, you connect one output to one input. If I want to connect multiple, then I'm going to shift drag. So I click and I shift and drag and that will connect multiple inputs. I can do that again. Right now these two are the same, so it's turned orange. So I'm going to just change the value here and I will start drawing my polyline. like so. Another way we could draw the points for this is simply to take one of these point parameters, copy and paste it a number of times, for example, edit the points, click Select the point, edit it using the gumball. Start to create the shape I want. And then connect these. So shift and drag to connect the wires. Multiple wires is my vertices and the order matters. So I wanna go in the sequence that I want the lines and it's gonna connect these. So there we have a definition for a polyline. Now let's make a definition for a curve. Let's draw it first in Rhino. So here in the sidebar, you see some of the curve commands. Here is a NURBS curve, a curve through control points, and here's a interpolate curve from interpolated points. So I'm gonna use this. So we'll draw this. We need a series of control points. A start point, control point, control point, and my last endpoint, and I hit enter to finish. And there we've drawn a curve interpolated through points. Now we can see the, the handles along this, and you can use these to edit the curve if you want. Now let's go back to Grasshopper and we're going to look at a simple way to um, 
make a curve is to reference it from Rhino. So back in params, under geometry, we can pick curve and place a curve parameter here. We can reference this curve by right clicking on curve, set one curve, and we've set this curve from Rhino. Now, if I move transform the Rhino curve, it's going to transform the grasshopper curve. If I delete the Rhino curve, it's going to empty this parameter. So what I want to do is probably internalize this data so it's stored in Grasshopper and not connected to Rhino anymore at some point. So I can right click on this, internalize data, and the Grasshopper curve is now stored inside this parameter and it's not no longer linked to the Rhino one. So the Rhino one, if I move it, it's separate. If I delete it, the Grasshopper one stays here. So this is a nice way, and it will be saved when you save the grasshopper definition. This is a simple way to create and store a curve, but let's define our curve entirely in grasshopper. So we have our the four points we made for our polyline, and we're going to construct a cur curve through these points. We're going to go to the curve panel, curve tab, to the um, spline panel, and we can pick either interpolate or nerves. I'm going to pick interpolate, curve, place it here. So what we're going to do is interpolate this curve through a set of vertices. So I'm going to place the first point, unite the first point, and my component is going to turn red because it can't solve this. I'm going to drag the second point, shift and drag to connect the second point, and I've drawn a straight line between these first two points. Connect the third point, and shift, drag, connect the fourth point, and we've drawn a curve through the points. Now, I can change the shape of the curve by clicking on each point, hitting the gumball, and for example, changing the shape of the curve. So we can edit our curve this way. Now there's more ways of drawing a curve, ways that to do it in Grasshopper that we can't in Rhino, like um, using math to create a sine wave. And we'll cover that in another tutorial. For now, let's go ahead and um, create surfaces. We'll use this curve to create a surface. So if we look in the surface um, panel, you can see that there are, in the surface tab, you can see there's primitive surfaces and freeform surfaces. We're going to start with a primitive surface. For example, we can make a plane. If you place the plane component, you'll see rather than just lines, we have um, a boundary um, and a surface inside of it. This is defined by uh, an X size, a Y size, and a plane. Now, we want to make instead a surface from these points, from this curve through another curve. So let's go ahead and just copy this whole, let's place another interpolate curve. Let's draw this in, uh, in Rhino first, actually. I'm going to close Grasshopper. And here in Rhino, I'm going to draw an interpolate curve. 
Let's say I, I draw it in the right view. Interplate curve. I'm going to draw it in right view. And I'm going to draw another interplate curve, different shape. And I drew it in right view, and now I'm going to move it, for example, in top view. Through this set of curves, I can loft a surface. So I can use the command loft. I can find that here in, in the surface menu, loft. I'm going to accept the default options in this dialog, and this will create my lofted surface. Now, by default, I am in wireframe mode. So if I want to view the surface a little better, I can switch modes here to, for example, shaded. And I can see the shape of the surface that's lofted between these two curves. Now, let's model this in Grasshopper. So here in Grasshopper, I'm going to draw two sets of curves. I'll draw these again. So I'm going to place a series of say four point parameters. I'm going to draw these in right view. I'll select the second one. I'm going to edit it with a gumball. Select the third one, edit it with a gumball. Select the last one and move it. Now let's connect these, shift and drag points to the vertices, input, and there's my curve. I'm going to go ahead and add another interpolate curve, curve tab, primitive, uh, spline, interpolate, and I'm going to add, um, I'll copy and paste these points. put them in as my inputs. And I have the same curve twice. So I'm going to now change the, the position of these points. I'm going to move them all, select them all and move them all. Well, I'll move them all on the uh, X axis here. bit. Start to create a nice freeform surface. Change the shape a bit on the z-axis as well. And now we'll create um, a surface between these. So in the surface tab, we're going to go to freeform, the freeform panel. And we can pick either loft or rule surface. So loft, or if we want to search, instead of going through the panels, I can double click here and type in ruled surface to pick out the ruled surface. In this case, the results of these will both be the same. So we try to loft in Rhino, and we can do that here. Curve, shift and drag the second curve in as an input, and we get our lofted surface previewed. We could also instead use a ruled surface that's between two curves. Curve A, curve B creates a ruled surface. Now, if I change the points, it's going to reshape the surface. All 
All right. Now, let's um, see this in Rhino quickly. I'm going to draw a interpolate curve in right view quickly. I'm going to draw another one. Move it, for example, in top view, and create a loft. So I'll select both curves, you go to the surface, loft, and that will create a loft between these. In the viewport, pick shaded in the drop down, and we can see our loft. Now, if I want to change this right now, I can't. So we're already starting to see a difference. If I change this curve, it's disconnected. If I move it or if I change its control points, it's not changing the loft. Now, we can make it so it does. And let's try that. I'm going to delete the loft. And I have my curves here. Before I create the loft, I'm going to turn on record history at the bottom here. So. Now when I make the loft, it's going to know that it's constructed from these curves. So if I run the command loft, create this surface while history was turned on, then if I change the curve, the surface should transform along with the shape of the curve, like so similar to how if I change the parameters of the curve in Grasshopper, the shape of the curve also changes. That is record history down here. And that concludes this um, very simple introduction to Grasshopper. In the next tutorial, we're going to see how to turn a simple um, surface like that into a bench, into a piece of landscape furniture. The definition for the surface will be exactly the one we just made for uh, a ruled surface or a loft. Um, thank you for watching.